Greetings and welcome to The Right Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, Psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We welcome your calls. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can do that. If you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. And if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertiser recommended on the bright side, head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. And ask them about joining the bright side Ben team. If you want to make some money selling longevity products, start a business, work out of your home. If you're an entrepreneur and you enjoy the entrepreneurial lifestyle, making your own hours and working out of, working out of your home, being your own boss, enjoying all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, call 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can make some money at the same time, or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, Call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Or you can sign up from our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. If you're interested in checking out some high-end premium skin health products, skin treatment products, you want to know about our truth treatment products, truth retinol 5% gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all loaded with vitamins, vitamin C in particular, also vitamin A and our retinol 5% gel, never any preservatives or fragrances or fillers or waxes or emulsifiers or thickeners or water or anything your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right. Welcome back to The Bright Side. We're talking about the heart and heart disease for the last couple of weeks. We've been talking about the real causes of heart disease, not cholesterol. Cholesterol is not the cause of heart disease. Let's get that meme out of our minds. Cholesterol is not the cause of heart disease. And a statin drug is not going to, pre allow you, it's not going to prevent a heart attack. We've been talking about the more metaphysical aspects of the heart, which as it turns out aren't really metaphysical. They're grounded in reality. They're grounded in the physical nature of the heart. In other words, the metaphysical ideas about the heart representing emotions like love and peace and connection and uh, connection to each other, unification, these metaphysical or seemingly metaphysical ideas are really grounded in the heart's physical and measurable and scientifically detectable electromagnetic field. This electromagnetic field streams out of the heart. It can be detected by scientific, uh, scientific equipment up to six feet away from the body. And it's, this electromagnetic field is thousands of times more powerful than the electromagnetic energy of any other organ in the body. The heart is a highly electrical system. And in understanding this is the real understanding of heart disease and the real understanding of a healthy heart. It's about electromagnetics. It's about electronics. Heart waves are different when we're angry from when we're peaceful. 
and these differences are measurable. You can measure somebody's heart waves, the variability between the beats, and you can assess whether that person is angry or whether that person is happy. We talked about the intelligence of the heart, which like the emotional nature of the heart is also grounded in science. The heart has a brain. The heart has brain cells. Literally, the heart has brain cells. The heart secretes brain chemicals. It's a type of brain, along with the intestine. The intestine is said to be the second brain. The heart can be said to be the third brain. Via these chemicals, dopamine, for example, and via the cells of the heart cells, which are very similar, similar to cells that are located in the emotional center of the brain, via these cells, the brain has a, or the heart has a direct line of communication to the brain. As goes the heart, its rhythms and its electromagnetic waves, which code information about the body and the environment uh, that the body is in, just like radio waves code music and code news or code whatever we're listening to, as goes the heart, so goes the body. And that's true about the abstract heart of a group. Groups have a group heart, group of groups of people, organizations have a type of heart. It's an abstract heart. And then um, as goes the heart, so goes the heart of the physical body. So as goes the physical heart, the literal physical heart in the chest, so goes the health of the physical human being. Because the heart is responsible for synchronizing all of the energy in the body. The body is an energetic phenomena. The body's health is about the energy of the body. When we talk about nutritional supplementation, we're talking about facilitating the movement and the activity of energy. That's what vitamins do. Vitamins carry energy. Minerals carry energy. Essential fats, essential amino acids carry energy. Food is energy. And the digestive system is so important because it converts the food into energy. It's all about energy, folks. And the heart is the quintessential energetic system, energetic organ. And heart disease is about the energy of the heart, not cholesterol. The heart synchronizes. The heart's not only an energetic system itself. It synchronizes all of the energy in the body, the body of a physical body or a group body. And when the heart's rhythms are chaotic and incoherent, all of the energy of all the components of the body, whether the cells of the physical body or the individual human beings in a group of people, will likewise be chaotic, likewise be incoherent. It will show up as a sick organization or it will show up as a disease in a body. It will show up as a lack of health in a group or it will show up as a lack of health in the physical body. If you follow the news, what's going on in Washington in the White House is a classic example of chaos in a group that's associated with a heart that's chaotic. Not that I want to digress into politics, but it's kind of interesting how what's going on in our world is a reflection of what's going on in our bodies. So the uh, electromagnetics of the heart is a, a question of the physical nature of the heart. The heart's rhythms become chaotic when the physical nature of the heart becomes chaotic, when the physical nature of the heart becomes diseased. So what is it that causes the problem in the first place? Well, in order to understand that, we got to, and in order to understand how to stem the tide of our epidemic of cardiovascular disease, we got to understand that the nature of the heart as a biological structure. Science, doctors, medical folks will tell us that the heart is a pump. That's the conventional wisdom. And that has been the conventional wisdom since uh, Harvey discovered the circulatory system back in the 17th century. Before Harvey, I think his name's William Harvey, back in the 17th century, discovered the circulatory system. We really didn't really understand how the blood worked. But ancient physicians thought that the, that the liver was actually the source of blood. It wasn't until the seven, uh, 1600s, the 17th century, that we really kind of elucidated how blood moves through the body. And that was when the heart was, det was determined that the heart was a kind of pump. But when you think about it and when you examine it a little bit more closely, it doesn't really make sense. Can a small organ the size of a fist that <laughs> beats every second or so, can it really pump blood through 60,000 miles of blood vessels? Some of them so thin and tiny that you need a microscope to see them? This doesn't really make a lot of sense when you think about it. All right, we'll continue when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network.
Back on the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have questions about formulations, ingredients, or comments or success stories you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts and news stories and videos at all our websites and also the longevity products. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off our websites or by calling the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. All right, so we're talking about the heart, heart health, cardiovascular disease. According to scientists, the heart's a pump. That's the conventional wisdom. It has been so since William Harvey elucidated the circulatory system back in the 1600s. But upon closer examination, hmm, could it really be that a fleshy organ the size of a fist can pump blood through 60,000 miles of blood vessels? You know, your capillaries, which are tiny microscopic little blood vessels about the size of a cell, about the size of a red blood cell. If you spread out all your capillaries, they would cover a football field. There is an incredible, incredible amount of vascularity of, of, of vessels that blood has to traverse, and it doesn't really make sense that, boy, uh, uh, the, the heart, a tiny, relatively small little organ, could actually be the pump that, that forces the blood through all of that, and more and more scientists are beginning to recognize that that might not be the case. Not to mention the fact that uh, on the return trip, the blood is going against gravity, and somehow, the pumping action in combination with our muscle movement is supposed to move that blood upwards, up against gravity. It just doesn't make sense, and more and more scientists are, are thinking there may be more to it. And this is where we come into the idea of electromagnetics. Once again, we see electromagnetics running the body. It's not just gravity and mechanics, it's electromagnetics. The blood is a sticky fluid. It's a viscous fluid. It's a heavy fluid. And from a fluid dynamics perspective, it doesn't make sense that a heartbeat is going to have enough force to be able to push the blood through the entire circulatory system. In the book, uh, Human Heart, Cosmic Heart, Dr. Thomas Cowan makes a very compelling and real case that the movement of blood is actually a function of electromagnetic interactions between the blood itself, which contains electrically charged water as well as electrically charged proteins, and the electromagnetics of the circulatory vessels. That is the connective tissue. The circulatory vessels are made of connective tissue. According to Cowan, it's a magnetic interaction or pull that comes from how these things interact, how the blood interacts with the blood vessels. And there's a major clue there for dealing with heart disease, a major clue for dealing with circulatory diseases. If we understand that this movement, the circulation of blood, which is obviously so critical because blood delivers nutrients and oxygen and detoxifies, detoxifies cells, pulls toxins away from cells. If we understand that it's magnetics, it's electronics that uh, allows the blood to circulate and that this magnetic interaction or magnetic pull that results from the interaction between the blood and the blood vessels we will see how strengthening the blood vessels is the real key to dealing with heart disease and circulatory disease. This is why things like hyaluronic acid, glucosamine, gelatin, algae, vitamin C, aloe vera, all of these work to build and strengthen the blood vessels themselves. And in fact, polysaccharides that are found in uh, uh, in bone soup, the fucoid Z, algae, substances like glucosamine and hyaluronic acid, these polysaccharides act electromagnetically. They support the electromagnetics of blood flow. They're way more important than a statin drug for dealing with cardiovascular and circulatory health issues. Way more important. This is why the fucoid Z acts like a blood thinner. This is why the fucoid Z is like a blood tonic. This is why the fucoid Z is so good for so many different things. The fucoid Z helps thin the blood by strengthening and improving the inter strengthening the blood vessels and improving the interaction between the blood and the vessels. That's how you improve blood flow. That's how you improve heart health. At least one of the ways. Support the strength and the integrity of the blood vessels themselves. Vitamin C, essential fats, vitamin A, 
zinc, glucosamine, hyaluronic acid, bone soup, gelatin, aloe vera. Oh, do you need a prescription for any of these? No. Do any of these have side effects and toxicity? No. Do they really work? Yes. Do they make you healthier on multiple levels? Yes. It's a no-brainer. Unless you're a doctor. We talked about the heart as the master conductor of the energy in the body. It's it, the master entrainer. It entrains all of the rhythms of the body. It harmonizes all of the rhythms of the body. All of the electromagnetic waves are coming out of all the cells and the organs and the structures, uh, the tissues and the structures of the body. They're emitting electromagnetic waves. The heart is eliminating electromagnetic waves. And the heart sort of implants its waves on the electromagnetics of the cells and the tissues and the organs and the structures. That's called entrainment. The rhythm of the heart is the master conductor of the rhythms of the rest of the body. And when everything is in rhythm, that's called coherence. When the heart's rhythms are in, uh, in sync with the rhythms of the rest of the body, the, operate, the body operates as a coherent whole. That's called coherence. And it's associated with uh, an efficient coordination of all of the structures of the body. Coherence can be said to be, quote, a highly efficient mental and physical and emotional state. That comes from heart math. Coherence is a state that has been called by psychologists flow, F-L-O-W, flow. And flow is, a, it, 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 we've known about flow ever since human beings have been around. People have always known that there's a way to be in peak, of, uh, a way to operate in peak efficiency. Nobody ever called it flow until the last 50 or 60 years. A guy named Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, which is impossible to spell or say. I'll spell it for you if you want to look him up. C-S-I-K-S-Z-E-N-T-M-I-H-A-L-Y-I. His name is pronounced Chick Sent Mahali. He's a University of Chicago professor, and he wrote an awesome book called Flow. And he came up with the idea that operating at peak efficiency, when you basically just when you feel really good, is a psychological and scientific phenomena, which he labeled as flow. This flow state is a state of peak performance, and according to Chick Sent Mahali, writing in the book Flow. Going into flow state as often as possible is a key component of happiness, and it's an important way to increase productivity, creativity, and health, as well as the health of the heart. Coherence is flow. When we talk about coherence, when we talk about the heart's rhythms in training with the rhythms of the rest of the body as a master conductor, we're talking about flow. And it's related to the efficient action of the heart. When our heart's not healthy, it's the result of a lack of flow, a lack of, uh, a lack of coherence, incoherence in the heart. The relationship between the heart, the electromagnetics from the heart, and the nervous system, and the brain, and the uh, immune system, and all the cells of the body is not harmonious. And this incoherence shows up as a lack of flow, which shows up as a lack of creativity, a lack of productivity, a block in performance and ill health and disease, including cardiovascular disease. So the question should be, if we're really serious about heart health, if we're, if we're really serious about performance, if we're, we are really serious about having a good life, if we're really serious about eliminating diseases, is how do we get back in flow? How do we restore the heart and its energies back into coherence? Not taking a dumb statin drug. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue on the bright side right after this. Don't go away. We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, if you or a loved one is dealing with a health challenge that you cannot figure out and your doctor can't figure out, we can help you common sense wise. Everything we talk about here on this program makes sense. I don't, okay, I don't want to say common sense because it's not necessarily common, but it's sensible. It makes sense. It's not medical. You don't need to have a medical degree to understand the concepts that we're talking about and that we talk about every day on this program. 844-236-6010 is our number. And we'll get your calls here in just a moment. We do have lines open. From the, uh, from, uh, the National Academy of Sciences, 
proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, hormone from fat tissue can give protection against polycystic ovarian syndrome. PCOS is an absolutely miserable health challenge. When I first heard about it, maybe 20 years ago, nobody was talking about PCOS, but I started to see it in my patients over and over and over again because I was in the skin business. I'm still in the skin business. And PCOS largely shows up as a skin problem, specifically oily skin and acne. And it can be really, really traumatizing. In addition to oily skin and acne, the PCOS patient is going to be dealing with obesity, menstrual problems. Oh, the PCOS patient is a woman, typically, polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's a female health issue. It affects the ovaries. Too many cysts in the ovaries. So the PCOS patient, typical PCOS woman, is going to have bad skin, oily skin, be overweight or obese, have uh, uh, insulin or diabetes problems or hypoglycemia problems, reproductive issues, menstrual problems, be losing their hair and have hair on the face, have a mustache. It is a terrible thing. And nobody knows what to do about it. Doctors will give hormones for it. The hormones, it's caused by a hormone system that's whacked out and doctors will give hormones for it. So what do you do for PCOS? Well, two words estrogen and insulin. You work on your estrogen, you work on your insulin. According to this article, a hormone called adiponectin, which is secreted from fat, is also involved. Estrogen, uh, estrogen metabolism is closely tied in with body fat. That is, the more body fat you're carrying, the more excess body fat you're carrying, the more messed up your estrogen system is. So the first thing you do is you focus on estrogen and body fat, and you do this by working on your digestive system. Estrogen is processed in the intestine and the liver. When you have an estrogen problem, that is something that manifests as PCOS or something that manifests as obesity or something that manifests as reproductive health issues, something that manifests as infertility, something that manifests as autoimmune diseases, all of these are reflections of messed up estrogen, which in turn is related to a messed up digestive system. All roads lead to the digestive system, the first point on the triangle of disease. So if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, work on how you process estrogen by using probiotics, the ultimate nightly essence, eating more fiber, eating less, eating less food and eating less problematic foods, foods that cause digestive distress, eating less processed fats and burnt fats and cooked fats, hydrogenated fats. These are all strategies for stabilizing estrogen. Use progesterone cream. All PCOS patients should be on progesterone cream or at least using pregnenolone, P-R-E-G. N-E-N-O-L-O-N-E. The second element, the second word that you want to remember if you're dealing with PCOS is insulin. The first word is estrogen, which is a reflection of the digestive system. The second word is insulin, which is a reflection of the blood sugar system. Oh yeah, those are the two points on the base of the triangle of disease. No surprise. Do you have PCOS? Stop eating the fast-burning carbs, the sweets, the sugars. Eat more fiber. Use more protein. Use your sweeties. Make sure you're using your ultimate niacin. These are all strategies for helping stabilize insulin, protect insulin, and help the body utilize sugar. Don't forget selenium. Don't forget chromium and vanadium from your sweeties. Don't forget your fucoid Z. There's so many ways to do this. I had a conversation yesterday with a gal, with a lady who uh, has diabetes and her doctor has her on all kinds of medication for diabetes. Her blood sugar is still not being controlled, although it's gotten a little better since she started focusing on food. I said to her, look, blood sugar issues, diabetes, which is a leading cause of death and a leading cause of misery in this country, is only based in diet and the stress hormone cortisol. If you have blood sugar issues and they're showing up as anything, including PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, change the way you eat. That is in terms of um, fast burning sugars and carbohydrates, fruit juices and desserts and pasta and rice, etc. And make sure you support your body's ability to process sugar using nutritional supplements and supplementation. Okay, let's see. Let me get one more here and then we'll get your call. It's got lines open, by the way, 844-236-6010 from the New England Journal of Medicine. Australia, vitamin breakthrough to cut miscarriages and birth defects. Taking a common vitamin supplement could significantly reduce the number of miscarriages and birth defects worldwide. Hmm. You want to know what that supplement is? You want to know what that nutrient is? You want to know what that vitamin is? Vitamin B3, niacin. This stuff is absolutely amazing. In fact, it's almost not a vitamin in a way because your body actually makes niacin. Niacin niacin is so darn important that under deficiency conditions, the body will make a little bit of niacin. 
Now, you can still have niacin deficiency disease because you're not going to make a, enough of the niacin. And by the way, niacin deficiency disease is called pellagra. And it's in, uh, in medical school, pellagra is known as the four Ds, diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, and death. Those are the four signs of pellagra. But those are also the four signs of niacin deficiency. Oh, you may not have full-blown diarrhea, but you may have just digestive distress. You may have bloating or discomfort. You may not have full-blown dementia, but you may just have some forgetfulness. You may not be thinking clearly. You may have some brain fog issues. You may not have a full-blown case of dermatitis, but your skin may not look good. Or you may have dermatitis, or you may have dementia, or you may have uh, diarrhea. These are all the signs of niacin deficiency. Google pellagra, P-E-L-L-A-G-R-A, pellagra, or P-E-L-L-E-G-R-A, pellagra. Niacin deficiency is also associated now, according to uh, this uh, research in the New England Journal of Medicine, with miscarriages and birth defects. Moms, use your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, use your Ultimate Niacin, not to mention your ultimate EFAs and your Fucoid Z. Good nutritional supplementation is for mom and it's for baby. And moms who are not nutritionally competent themselves will have babies who are not nutritionally competent and who will run, risk of higher, uh, run higher risks of disease later in life. And speaking of that, from JAMA Pediatrics, we'll get your calls here in just a sec. From JAMA Pediatrics, low blood sugar in newborns linked to later difficulties. Yes, newborns have hypoglycemia. What causes hypoglycemia in a newborn? Well, first of all, moms who have problems with insulin will have babies who have problems with insulin. So this is why it's so, so, so important for moms, pregnant women, moms-to-be, to make sure you're paying attention to the same things we all have to pay attention to, but with extra vigilance. We all have to pay attention to our blood sugar and our insulin. We all got to be using chromium and vanadium and selenium and EFAs and nutri uh, uh, nutritional supplements that support blood sugar and insulin. But a mom, it's especially true. Moms who have too much insulin in their blood will tend to have babies who have low blood sugar, and this can be linked to cognitive difficulties later in life as well as health risks. Oh, yeah. The major cause of low blood sugar is dysbiosis, or at least a major cause of blo low blood sugar is messed up gut bacteria. You think that's a problem in newborns? You better believe it is. Because gut bacteria are supposed to come in through breast milk, through the mom, if the baby is not breastfed, or the baby is not uh, is born cesarean section, or the mom is not healthy, that's going to be a baby who's got messed up gut bacteria, and that in turn can lead to low blood sugar issues. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We will get your phone calls as soon as we come back from our commercial break. Got lines open. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll be with you shortly. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Indianapolis and say good morning to Ryan. How you doing, Ryan? I'm good. You? Doing good. Thanks for holding. What's up? I have a wife with MS. Oh, okay. And she has horrible fatigue problems. Okay. And I love all the stuff that we're trying to do. I'm a young Japanese distributor myself. Okay. And I know and listen to your program every day, and have tried all of your ideas on her. But we no, you couldn't have tried all of them because she wouldn't have her. She wouldn't have her symptoms if you did all of them. So let's okay. talk about MS. Let's talk about autoimmunity, okay? Because it's you know millions of Americans. I think last I heard, a hundred million Americans, some ridiculous number, eighty million, something like that, have autoimmune problems. I, actually, I don't know if it's that many, but it's a lot of people have autoimmune problems. So let's talk about autoimmunity. And I know I've talked about it before, but repetition is reinforcement. So here's the deal: autoimmunity is when the body turns this very form formidable chemical weaponry on itself instead of on the enemy. Okay. Make sense so far, Ryan? Yep. Okay. So the question is, why does the body attack, in the case of MS, the nerve sheath, the covering on the nerves? Why does the body attack itself, or the nerve sheath, or the thyroid, or the pancreas, or you know, various organs of the body? The connective tissue is a, a, a large subject of attack by, autoimmunity, by, uh, by uh, the immune system, the skin sometimes if you have psoriasis. Why does this happen? 
Well, here's the deal. The immune system is not stupid, but for some reason it sees these tissues as the enemy. It perceives the tissues as the, as the enemy. The question becomes why. What is, about, what is it about the tissue of a multiple sclerosis patient, the nerve tissue of a multiple sclerosis patient that makes it look foreign, it makes it look, look like the enemy? Well, what occurs when you have an autoimmune disease is something is getting into the body inappropriately and it's coming to rest in various sections, in various parts. In the case of MS, it's coming to rest uh, at the nerves, at the level of the nerves. In the case of the thyroid, this enemy invader is coming to rest at the level of the thyroid. Uh, in the case of uh, diabetes, type 1 diabetes, this enemy invader is coming to rest at the case of the uh, pancreas. In the case of lupus or scleroderma or psoriasis, is coming to rest in various places of the body. The key point to remember is something is getting into the body that shouldn't be getting into the body, period. Autoimmune disease does not just happen in a closed system. It doesn't just happen. Something's getting into the body. So then the question is, is what's getting into the body? Now, if you want to know what's getting into the body, you've got to look at how things, how things get into the body, the portals into the body. And when we say the body, by the way, we're talking about into the blood. That's really what we mean by into the body. Things don't get into the body. They get into the blood. So you say, how do things get into the blood? Well, you've listened to this program before, Ryan. Is your wife uh, shooting up crack in the back alley? No. I don't think so, right? She's not sticking in things in through her skin. So how else do things get into the body? Work with me here, Ryan. How do things get into the blood? Oh, what? What? Well, eating and drinking and yes. breathing. No, and all that stuff. right there. Eating and drinking. Breathing certainly a little bit. It, you know, some's, get, some's getting breathed in through the breath, through oxygen. But oxygen or air is nowhere near as corrupted as our food. So you're looking, when you have an autoimmune disease, you are looking at a food and digestive problem first and foremost. And you have to get to the bottom of that. Now, we had Terry Walls, Dr. Terry Walls in the program, uh, I don't know, maybe three or four months ago, maybe more. She wrote a book called The Walls Protocol, W-A-H-L-S. The Walls Protocol describes how she cured herself of MS. She cured herself of MS. All right, now, what did she do? She didn't use drugs. She didn't use anything magical or special. She simply modified how she ate. If you go on WebMD's website, it'll show you that fasting improves multiple sclerosis symptoms. Now, WebMD is not, you know, they're not supporters of anything we talk about here on the bright side. So if they're saying fasting improves MS symptoms, you want to listen. Why does fasting improve MS, uh, MS symptoms? Why does digestive strategies, why did Dr. Terry Walls make her MS disappear, completely disappear by changing the way she eat? Because this is the source of the autoimmune uh, activity. So you got to get to the bottom of the food problem. Now, is that easy? Not necessarily. It's not necessarily easy to get to the bottom of the food problem, but it can be done. And I'm not sitting here talking about food because I'm Mr. You know, food guy. I'm not. I don't have a great diet. And if I'm hungry, I'll eat whatever. But the point I'm trying to make is if you have an autoimmune disease and, and oh my God, you know as well as I, you know better than I do, that MS is, is hideous. It's a miserable condition. It's unspeakable. Can I tell you something? Yes, sir. She she is she owns Dr. Wall's protocol. We have listened to it. We have tried the diet. We've I don't want to hear what this. you've done She's though. Done Ryan, Ryan. You haven't done it because we're let me finish, brother. Because where there's okay, smoke, there's Ryan, hang on. Where there's smoke, there's fire. You can't say, well, I got smoke, but, but I did everything to protect my house from burning. I mean, I, I put the fire, I put the asbestos in and the, 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 the uh, anti-fire, the fireproofing material, but there's smoke. That, that means it must not be a fire. Yes, if you have smoke, you have a fire, and it doesn't matter if you protected yourself against the fire. If you have MS, you have an immune problem. If you have an immune problem, you have a digestive problem. It doesn't matter what you've done. You don't want to say, I've done everything, because then you can't do anything. You're done. Then you've got to go home. You got to say, what am I not doing? Now, when you say, and, when, and not just you, by the way, Ryan, because I hear it all the time. Oh, I'm eating good. I do everything right. I follow Dr. Wallach's protocol. I hear that all the time. See, what happens when we think we eat right, we're going by what we think is a good food. When people say, and I'm not saying this is necessarily you, Ryan, but it might very well be you. When we say, uh, I, I eat really well, that means we eat well according to Dr. Oz or according to what we saw on the internet or according to some other medical professional that we trust. It doesn't mean we're eating good for us. How do I know that? Because you're symptomatic or your wife is symptomatic. The symptoms speak louder than anything you're doing. 
if you have symptoms, something's causing them. This is just logic. This isn't medicine. This is logic. If you have a symptom, something is causing it. So then the question is, what's causing it? Well, you can say, oh, it's these angels, and they're sprinkling angel MS dust on my head, and now I have MS. Or in the Middle Ages, they said, oh, it's little elves that shoot arrows at you. Or it's, it's clouds in the air. Well, obviously, that's silly. So what could be causing it? It's something that's getting in the body. Now, she's not sticking things, sticking things in through the skin. So how do things get in the body? We're just working logically here. This is just logic. So what you have to do if you think and you, you know, it sounds to me like you've tried, quote, tried everything, unquote, and you're doing all the good foods, etc. So if that's the problem, then you've got a little mystery on your hand. Right, Ryan? Does it make sense so far? I hope I'm not, I don't mean Absolutely. to be, a, a, okay, good. I'm, I'm trying to be loving here. I'm not being mean or attacking no, no, here. I want, no, I get okay, it. good. Okay, good. So, so then the question, because say, I'm doing everything right. I'm eating all the right food, but I still have the symptoms. Okay, now you have a mystery. So how do you solve a mystery? Like a detective. When, you, when, when a detective comes to the scene of a crime, he carries a notebook with him, and he writes everything down. He writes all the clues down. It helps to start with a swear OV cleanse. And even that alone, just the swear OV cleanse or the fasting, if you don't want to do a swear OV cleanse, just do a fast, that will reduce the symptoms. Now, depending on how broken down she is, it may take you know, three or four days before she starts to get a reduction of the symptoms, but they will, re they will subside eventually. Then what you do when you stop your fast is you get your notebook and you write everything down and you do not have presumptions or preconceived ideas about what a good food is. You see how that food works with your body, starting with your favorite foods and eating as simply as possible. That is not complex, not, not foods that have a lot of working parts to them. Just a piece of chicken or a piece of tuna rather than chicken salad sandwich or tuna salad sandwich just a piece of bread instead of a hamburger just a piece of meat instead of a hamburger so you kind of so you can isolate the problem foods always starting with your favorites then you keep notes and what you'll notice is certain foods especially your favorites are causing problems those are foods that be, need to be eliminated that three-part program is called the swear of cleanse slash fast the uh, uh, food diary and the elimination diet. Once you start eliminating foods, then you start to patch up the gut. Everything you can think of, gelatin, the glucogel caps, digestive enzymes, uh, zinc, glutamine powder, uh, uh, all, the ultimate nightly essence that is probiotics, fiber. Are these things you're already doing, uh, Ryan? Absolutely. She does then, all of this stuff. And she has she done a food diary? Hang on, bro. One meal a day. Hang on, bro. Hang on, bro. Has she done a food diary? Has she done a food diary? She's working on the diary, and we keep okay. eliminating things all the time, trying to there you go. as simple as we possibly can. There you go. Has she fasted or done a swear of cleanse? Oh, many times. And does like she I get said, better she when she fasts? One meal a day. Does she? Not no, no. Forget. Really. Does she get better? Well, not really is not the same as no. Does she get better when she does a swear of cleanse or fast? Yes or no? The fatigue does not get better, no. Okay, so does anything get better here? I'm, I feel like I'm pulling teeth. Does anything get better when she does a, a swear yeah. cleanser fat? Yeah. Okay, then you're, yeah. that, that's good. Just leave it right there, bro. You're on the right track. If as something gets better when you do something, you're on the right track. Is it completely better? No, obviously not. Listen, this is a really important subject, Ryan. I'd love it if you could send me an email with your phone number or call back on Monday because it's a really, really important topic, and I'm happy to work with you. But we're just out of time. I apologize. Thank you for your call, bro. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. Please check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.